So in the previous video we installed drivers for EasyCab. In this video let's see what program we can use to record or just preview the device that we connect to EasyCab. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use VirtualDub because at the moment I think it's one of the better smaller programs to use. So let's go ahead and see how to download it. Go ahead and do a web search for VirtualDub. Too. So there is an original version of virtual dub. This is an enhanced version of that original virtual dub. I'm going to click download. And by the way, you'll notice that even if you download the original version, you'll notice how very how they are very similar. Now, while virtual dub is downloading, go ahead and take your device and also easy cap. Plug in the easy cap to your computer and also turn on your device. In my case, I'm going to use a PlayStation 1 console. Oh, and there is one more thing. It would be preferable if you could load up a game so it's easier to see what's going on and how fast is the preview. Once the program has downloaded, I'm going to extract the archive and open it up. Now, before you open up virtual dub, make sure that EasyCap is connected to your device via the proper cables and that your device is powered on. In my case, it's PlayStation 1 connected via the composite cables. The composite cables are basically yellow, wh white and red, which yellow is for video, white and red are for the audio. And that's about it. So I'm going to open up virtual dub that corresponds to the version of my operating system, which is the 64 bit. And let's see how to set up virtual dub so we can first preview what's happening. So first I click capture, capture AVI. Then I need to click device and go to OEM device, which in this case is virtual dub. Once you can see the screen, you're going to notice that in my case, it doesn't look good. So let's go through all the options slowly one by one and fix everything so it can look the best as possible and we can record or just play the games, for example. So let's click on video. First thing I want to choose is overlay and that's how I'm going to get this screen to appear. Or you can go to video preview as well. That works as well. Next you have preview field mode so you can mess with these and see if you get better results with something else. So I'm gonna leave it at progressive. Next I can go to video, video source, make sure video composite is selected. Then I can go to video, capture pin. You're gonna notice that in this case it's set at NTSCM but my console is PAL and the game that I inserted is actually a PAL game. So I'm gonna go to video, capture filter and change the video standard to PAL D, for example. Also go to video proc amp. You're going to see that bunch of settings for me are changed here. So I'm going to click default and then hit OK. And now you're going to notice that once the screen shows up, the game or just the screen itself looks much better. Next, I'm going to go to video crossbar. In this case, I want to make sure that video composite is selected just like it was and that's just fine. Let's go to video and levels. This is where you can actually change the brightness the contrast, the hue and all this stuff. But remember that 128 is the default value. Now you might be asking yourself, wait, I can't really see exactly the whole screen. It looks a little cropped to me. What's going on? Well, click on video, set custom format and make sure 720 by 576 is selected and hit OK. Now you're going to notice that the screen is going to appear correctly. Okay, we've set up the video as we like it. There are a bunch of other options that you can go through and mess with them like noise reduction and a couple of more things. So it's up to you to explore a little bit. But what about the audio? Well, we can click audio and then enable audio playback. And now you're going to notice that you finally do get to hear the audio from the game itself. Since I am recording my screen and trying to show you guys all of this, it might be a little choppy or laggy, but for you, you should have no problems. Now, if you don't hear anything, go under audio and make sure capture device is selected. Even though there is OEM device, if I click there, I can't hear anything. So I just leave it at uh, capture device. As far as audio source, I have it set at audio line and that's why I'm getting the sound. Okay, we've set up everything. Let's see how to record. First, click on video. Now you can go down here and click compression. Here you can select what type of compressor or to use for the video itself. 
In this case, I don't want anything changed. I don't want the video compressed, so I'm just going to choose uncompressed. But you should be already familiar with these settings if you have used any video recording programs in the past. The way it works is you simply select a compressor that you're familiar with, you adjust the quality, you can actually configure the compressor itself by clicking the configure button. A bunch of these compressors actually have different settings, you'll see for example X264 has different settings. If you don't know how to use a certain compressor, I suggest looking up on internet how each one is used. But for me, I'm gonna leave it at uncompressed because I don't want anything changed. The compressor is gonna affect how your video looks like, it might make the quality worse depending on what options you choose. For example, if I select quality to be about 10, that means the quality will be very low. So in this case, I select 100 quality, so the best possible. I chose uncompressed and in my case, the video is gonna stay as it is on the screen, but also the file size will be much bigger. That's why you use a compressor if you want to minimize the file size, but also maintain as best as possible quality. It's easy to figure out that you should look for a small file size, but also very good or as best as possible video quality. And that's why video compressors are used, to try to get best of both worlds. You can find online which of these compressors are good, it's up to you. To keep it simple, uncompressed. Audio. Now also for the audio the same applies. You go to audio and compression. Now you might be familiar for example with MPEG layer 3 which in this case is MP3. Once again to keep it simple I'm just gonna use no compression. Once you set up your video and audio compressors how you want them to be. Let's click on file and set capture file. Basically we tell the program where to save the file. I'll choose library videos and name it test1 and click save. There are a couple of more things you can do. You can go to capture and capture settings and here you have a couple of options. The frame rate, wait for OK to capture, maximize CPU power, stuff like that if you're getting any issues. Anyhow, once you're ready, click capture and capture video. On the right side it says it's capturing how many frames, the total time and also the size. And as you can see, just for 10 seconds the size is 150, actually 80. 180 megabytes. And once again, that is why you use compressors. As you can see, the file size gets enormous. Anyhow, I'm just gonna do a couple of movements in the game itself and we can click capture, stop capture. Now I can open up the library videos and here is our recording. So as you can see for 30 seconds, the file size is 500 megabytes. So you can imagine how big file sizes get if you do not use a compressor. I can double click and play the video. I'll purposefully move to the place where I did do a couple of motions. And as you can see, it works just fine. Now for those of you who are wondering, can you play the game like this? Well, it is possible, but not recommended in my opinion because I do feel a slight amount of lag and that is simply due to the device that is used. The capture card itself has to transmit the data to your computer very fast for you to get a playable experience. In my own opinion I do feel a slight amount of lag which makes it unplayable for me or very hard so I don't use it for this. But for example if you were trying to record your VHS tapes this would be very good way to do it. So guys, there you go. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully it helps you out. I wanted to show you the best program that I think you can use for free. The smallest program, very lightweight on your computer, I think. But still, in the future, I'll show you more programs so you can choose for yourself which one you think works the best for you. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you want to see more and follow up on more videos where I show you more programs. I review the device itself, show you a couple of more tutorials. And that's about it. Thank you, and I'll see you in future episodes. Priest, signing out. Should have brought my coat at the end of the line on my shit untold Messed up a lot, used to be waiting for something or someone to give me my spot God only show you the way, it's all up to the plan and the paper and people yeah. you brought I learned when I died, I hope that they notice and give us a shot I swear